morning, everyone. We're both so honored to be here. In alignment with the purpose of this presentation, we've chosen to speak collaboratively, not necessarily to overemphasize the Venus-Mars dynamic for the mythologically inclined, but simply to model the process of synergy and synthesis that we believe to be inherent in the relationships amongst the sciences and arts. First, we'd like to introduce ourselves and the nature of our work to give you a greater context for who we are and how we arrived here at the EU conference. For nearly a decade, David and I have been studying, teaching, painting, and exhibiting in galleries and museums, events and conferences in the United States and Canada, as well as throughout Europe and Australia. Over the years, collaboration has become foundational to our creativity and to our work within diverse communities. We represent a guild of artists in a master's painting lineage that has been handed down through time. This tradition emphasizes both technique and inner vision equally. Passing this lineage on to the next generation of artists, we will be among the first teachers at the new Vienna Academy of Visionary Art opening in the fall. David's art graced the cover of the 2010 publication of the first manifesto of visionary art, a revolutionary treatise on the depth of ancient and ongoing art traditions by Canadian author and artist, Lawrence Caruana. In 2009, Aloria and I founded Art Spirit Now, a cultural arts organization declaring the Renaissance is now as a meme with which to influence culture. Our purpose for creating this organization was to open doors to a new meaningful movement in the arts. In parallel to what we witness in certain domains of the sciences, reigning paradigms in the arts do all they can to maintain dominance even if their terms have long since expired. Based on our observations, it seemed as though contemporary art and science were in a similar predicament, and perhaps together we could lift ourselves out of this situation. In Portland, Oregon, we co-produced a multimedia arts event that included presentations, panels, gallery, immersive environments, live painting and music. Attendees expressed tremendous inspiration around the concept of a literal renaissance or rebirth of culture based on an interdisciplinary approach. Art Spirit Now evolved, to focus, evolved its focus to include three primary disciplines. In this culture wheel, art, science, and consciousness are represented by the three primary colors, while the nuances in between represent the full scope of the cultural organism. Their overlapping territory constitutes a complete circuit of the human experience. This graph includes cosmology, architecture, technology, music, and many other disciplines. However, depending on one's lens, these fields are entirely mutable. A year later in 2010, while Eloria and I were on our art pilgrimage honeymoon in Europe, we began noticing an intriguing symbol carved in stone on sculptures in significant places around Paris, both in and around the Louvre, as well as on monuments and buildings throughout the city. We were immediately gripped by this primordial image, and here's another example of an architectural detail inside the Louvre. The symbol seemed to appear everywhere we looked. One day while searching Emmanuel Velikovsky on the internet, we naturally came across the Thunderbolt, Thunderbolts tutorial video which specifically answered our question, stating that this symbol was none other than the cosmic thunderbolt. Like many others, we were introduced to the world of plasma cosmology through Velikovsky and Worlds in Collision, which we had read years before. Upon return to the States, we met with Dave Talbot and Michael Armstrong in Portland, the city we'd been living in before leaving for Europe. Our world had come full circle, and the meeting of art and science has since been of growing interest in regards to the EU and Thunderbolts project. Returning to the meeting of art and science, that is, art with a capital A and science with a capital S, in that we'll be dealing with the broad definitions of these two disciplines and then working toward more specific examples. In this presentation, we'll be looking at art and science in three distinct ways. Through the individual human experience, through the collective cultural body of humanity, and through the relationship to the electric universe paradigm. In this often cited diagram, art and science can be seen as reciprocal expressions of human capacity. The place where the two intersect is the fertile ground of potential, the state of wonder where anything is possible. To take it a step further, it is our basic foundational premise that art times science equals genius. By the way, this is the only equation you'll see in our presentation. <laughs> genius implies an individual consciously manifesting the full capacity of his or her abilities at an exceptional level, a quality prevalent amongst the EU group. Something completely novel emerges from the convergence of these faculties, shown to be evident in both the individual as well as in a given culture. Utilizing intuition and observation, we arrive at permaculture. 
Combining design and engineering, we get architecture. The qualities of imagination and analysis make up the polymath, or Renaissance man, or Renaissance woman. Robert Henry, artist, professor, and author of The Art Spirit, stated, genius is not a possession of the limited few, but exists in some degree in everyone. Where there is a natural growth and a full and free play of faculties, genius will manifest itself. The most apt metaphor for the meeting of art and science is the human brain in its diversified arenas of functionality. The scientific capacity of the mind observes, integrates, and comprehends a chosen focus, accruing knowledge. The creative capacity applies, implements, and expresses from its experience. Whole brain functionality results from a synergy between the hemispheres and manifests as genius. With greater perspective, a much broader field lies in the collective lens. As electricity and beha plasma behavior are scalable, so too shall be our metaphors. In the modern era of competition and separation, art and science have succumbed to deconstructionism, a reduction of the wholly functioning and interconnected universe into its constituent parts. Antiquated modalities have little more to work with than a dissecting table and, of course, gravity. When seen exclusively through this lens of deconstruction, the view of the cosmos becomes devoid of meaning, just as a human form in a painting loses meaning, creating a sense of isolation. Art professor Bern Hogarth states that the return of hu the human anatomical figure to the lexicon of art is a major condition toward the establishment of a new dualism of art and science. Does this suggest a dawning renaissance in the modern era? It is truly no surprise that the visionary science of the electric universe points to an existence in which all parts are connected in a web of interdependence. This concept indicates a changing of the guard and the renewal of an understanding which applies to all facets of the complex human psyche. As this idea of interconnection permeates the new frontiers of science, an advancing model is implied for a fully developed network of fully developing people. Interestingly, among artists, expressions of interconnectedness also represent a distinctly unique and unifying paradigm. Today's visionary artists illuminate a unifying thread through time, combining hidden meanings within the world's diverse traditions. Through a wide lens that integrates a broad range of cultural perspectives, a universal image language emerges. A defining symbol of the Thunderbolts project and of the Electric Universe Conference is the cosmic thunderbolt, or the Vajra. This image offers us a unique potential to bring seemingly distant worlds together. This is but one example of innumerable sacred images that hold deep significance for the many layers of human beingness. This object is a historical record carved in rock, a ritual instrument or supernatural weapon for religious ceremonies, a plasma discharge as scalable phenomenon, as well as a work of art and an object of reverence. It all depends on one's perspective. Each of these definitions represents a narrow view of reality, though if recombined, we can begin to assemble a cohesive picture. In this sense, the symbol adequately represents the interdisciplinary diversity required of a modern day renaissance, which is, by all evidence, alive and well within the Thunderbolts project. Just as the artists of prehistory and each ensuing epoch left messages through which we have deciphered otherwise unfathomable experiences of their time, so too will the emerging Renaissance generation record the profound discoveries of our time, continuing the ongoing tale of this fantastic human journey. Where do art and science meet, and what is the nature of their interface? Are these seemingly opposed factions really so different? Both have their own unique means to fulfill but one ultimate desire, to fully comprehend foundational universal principles. Would we be surprised to find that the, cr the crossroads is preserved within the mythic domain of sacred art, created to memorialize experiences considered to be worth remembering? Artistic masters throughout time have indeed preserved the mythic or otherwise traditional iconologic or image language, but have they truly seen beyond the story of their respective times? In his book, Enter Through the Image, Lawrence Caruana comments on the sacred moment in art. We stand, as it were, at the image's threshold, yet lack the ability to cross it. Without any clear remembrance of the ancient image language, we stand in mute comprehension before these silent stones. The only way to cross their sacred threshold is to regain their mythic outlook onto the world and onto time. How many artists ever had the opportunity to hear the kind of groundbreaking information that is presented at this conference? 
Had Botticelli access to plasma cosmology material, how different might the masses of humans look upon the birth of Venus? Not through a fog of mythic confusion, but through a clear lens of comprehension that myth, art, and science have collectively developed. As it stands, he could hardly have been more explicit in his commentary references. While many artists simply recreate concepts of the past, a select few have utilized their full capacity of perception to read deeper into the myths than most. Here, Gustave Moreau expresses his profound understanding of the truly cosmic proportions and physical implications of mythology. Numerous celestial bodies inhabit this painting. Two are in an alignment configuration. Another displays a familiar eight-pointed star in a cometary aspect, and yet another appears to be a setting sun on the horizon. Today's visionary artists still utilize the rich mythological and archetypal symbology found in ancient art. Science has the potential to offer greater clarity to these symbols, illuminating their true origins and imbuing them with meaning beyond the limitations of esoteric understanding. The scientifically inclined artist bases their process and development on patterns observed in nature. They will then set out to express an inner vision that conveys a relationship to the greater universe, as he or she has adequately defined the various elements which give meaning to the perfection in nature. The lens through which the artist views the universe may be elemental, atomic, anatomic, chromatic, mechanistic, or electrical. This provides the framework for each artist's individual expression. On the meeting of art and science, the work of the foremost American visionary artist, Alex Gray, must be further explored, as it encompasses a multitude of overlaying worldviews, integrated for a broad picture of the human cosmos. Husband and wife artists Alex and Allison Gray are building a museum in New York called the Chapel of Sacred Mirrors, or COSM. The Heart of COSM, the Sacred Mirrors by Alex Gray, are a series of 21 paintings examining the body, mind, and spirit in rich detail. Here we see one of the bronze frames of the Sacred Mirrors paintings, the left side depicting biological evolution in a DNA spiral, and on the right side, technological evolution. As far as our own work is concerned, David and I are working on a volume entitled Illuminated Cosmology, an illuminated manuscript and poetic expression of the dance of the archetypes through the lens of the electric universe. The paintings that follow are collaborative works, and they're all featured in Illuminated Cosmology, which is due to be completed later this year. Our most recent collaborative series, The Four Angels of the Apocalypse, is loosely based on The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, the four riders are commonly seen as symbolizing conquest, war, famine, and death. While the word apocalypse is often defined as the complete and final destruction of the world, or an event involving damage on a catastrophic scale, the foundation of the term apocalypse means to uncover or reveal something that has been hidden. The white angel of liberation vanquishing conquest, the birth of Venus, the great comet of antiquity, and an actual event in recorded history. In her hand is a caduceus staff, pointing to a military graveyard on the planet Mars. The goddess is crowned by her planet's orbital pattern as seen from Earth, the five inferior conjunctions of Venus. The red angel of peace overcoming war. In this interpretation, peace is found through accepting and forgiving violence and upheaval in the past, when Earth experienced destruction on a planetary scale as a result of cosmic events. From the crown of Venus, a plasma discharge electrically sculpts and scars the surface of Mars, illuminated in the scallop detail of the Olympus Mons caldera. The black angel of abundance relieving famine, hovering over a parched desert landscape. In her hands, upper atmospheric sprites flash, translating cosmic energy to Earth. Helical circuits and bead lightning constitute the birthplace of stars in the cosmos. The concept of a finite supply of energy, whether on Earth or beyond, is due to a lack of true understanding as the universe is electrical in nature and comprised of an infinitely available energy. The Green Angel of Rebirth, Transcending Death. This painting recognizes the nuclear paradigm as fundamentally destructive, as evidenced by the devastation of Chernobyl and Fukushima. Gravitational cosmology regards our sun and all stars as thermonuclear reactors. The electric universe offers a transcendent understanding of stars as electrodynamic phenomena, redefining our concept of energy and leaving behind the old model. These life-size paintings were created in Barcelona and are currently being exhibited throughout Europe. 
While hanging in exhibition halls, the four angels provide excellent opportunities to introduce viewers to the electric universe through the ancient language of images, with descriptions translated into each local language. A number of other collaborative paintings have been inspired by the electric universe material. This is Valles Marineris in the Golden Dawn, showing electrical interactions between celestial bodies as seen from the surface of Mars. Axis Mundi, an amalgamation of symbols for the cosmic axis and world tree. And finally, Morpho Mythology, with Venus aglow in a wrathful Medusa-like state, turning the terrestrial landscape into crystallized stone, with Saturn and an approaching luminary on the horizon. We will conclude our presentation with this quote from Isaac Asimov. How often people speak of art and science as though they were two entirely different things, with no interconnection. An artist is emotional, they think, and uses only his intuition. He sees all at once and has no need of reason. A scientist is cold, they think, and uses only his reason. He argues carefully step by step and needs no imagination. That is all wrong. The true artist is quite rational as well as imaginative and knows what he is doing. If he does not, his art suffers. The true scientist is quite imaginative as well as rational and sometimes leaps to solutions where reason can follow only slowly. If he does not, his science suffers. If there is any evidence of the synthesis of art and science creating a new renaissance, it is this pioneering group. Thank you for your attention and for your work. Thank you.